Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're at part 20 of the Final Fantasy IV Let's Play. Take two. Take, yeah, take two. Lay, oh, well, first off, you may have noticed that... Cecil crashed garage band. Yeah, Cecil crashed... Fucking jinx. <laughs> like, I, was asking, I was telling you that, you know, garage band rarely crashes on me, but it's really annoying when it does, especially 28 minutes into the part. But, uh... Ain't that a bitch? I, I, was, I was telling you about it, or, Matt blames Cecil, and I couldn't think of a word to it because that actually makes a degree of sense. <laughs> makes a hell of a lot of sense given what we've seen. Oh, man. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the little delay there. You may have noticed that this was not uploaded on a Sunday. Uh, I, I, Mario Party. That, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. So, we're going to visit the only area I didn't show off yet on the moon, the home of the Hummingways. That's pretty much all these guys do. Um... I almost here. thought your cell phone was going off or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, it's a bill collector. <laughs> oh, son of a... <laughs> I don't want to answer the phone. So, you, you can... This hey, is actually yes, the Johnny only Day shop... It's the, it's the only shop in the original game where you could buy elixirs. Unless you're playing the um, the original SNES version. Where they pretty much... Give water, them to you? Yeah, they watered the game down because you can buy um, elixirs and ethers from shops. You could do that in Final Fantasy VIII as well. When you get, you have to open up a, real, a store that usually tells you they're closed. Yeah. But if they tell you to come on in and they're open, you can buy elixirs there. I what's, think it's like thirty-seven five. What's the stipulation for getting the store to open? None. It's just random. Oh, it's random. Oh. So it's just a matter of just revisiting every once in a while. Yeah. Like looking for a job in the economy when you've been unemployed for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the last part we took care of the optional cave of trials, exclusive to the advanced and PSP versions of Final Fantasy IV. So now we're actually going to tackle the final dungeon of the game, the Lunar Subterrane. Thanks to the power of jump cuts, we don't have to traverse through those two caves on the way to this place. It's kind of annoying. I kind of wish there was a shortcut at this point to get to this place. Fabulous power! But wait, 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 <laughs> ground meat. It did look like ground beef, dude. Maybe the, that's what that's what the Lunarians consider as carpet. They're savages. Well, no, they're just really eccentric. Mm. You know, at least Extus has the common decency to make sh pretend his isn't <laughs> macabre in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking to crystals. They've had a better conversation than lightning would. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> They've all fulfilled their duties. Yes. No, what's it called? The Lassie? Uh, Falsy Stone. Falsy, sorry. I hate it. Just call it a fucking mission. <laughs> Falsy Stone's the final... F you said you only got to Chapter 5. They're, they're mission stones to Chapter 11. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about the name. When you're given a mission yeah. from... Uh, something, something that should be not named as such. I... Are you trying to avoid spoilers, or you really can't no, recall the no, plot so it, quickly? No, I'm just I'm struggling because I can't I can't remember what the fuck is the difference between a Falsi or Lassi or Lassi is a Silent Hill resident. Falsi is basically a person who's been given a task to do okay, the job. That, that's all I wanted to know. By the um. Just wait, call it a wait no, wait, what's the Falsi called? A missionary. But uh, anyway, this the, is not as simple as missionary. Dude, well, what was I'm this? Just, just, simple, just simplify for me. I do like the, uh... That's what I've been asking Final Fantasy XIII to do while I played it. Anyway, um... Wait, you about to say something? You like what? I like the design of the Iron Giants in this one. They got, like, a hand cannon and a claw. <laughs> <laughs> do you fight the Terminator? Uh, no. I don't... Off the top of my head, no. Because <laughs> we haven't gone to the optimal shit yet. But, uh... Well, as you might have noticed now by this encounter with uh, the Dark Sages, Moon Maidens, and Armored Fiends, uh, some of the, most of the random encounters here are the same encounters you fight in the Lair of the Father. Where and shockingly bombed. human. Yeah, and shockingly human. Uh, Save the uh, Armored Fiend there. Yeah, well, it could be Iron Man. Tony Stark could be dwelling inside there. Uh, Mark 17. <laughs> Minus one Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it even has like an arc reactor on its belly. By the way... Johnny, in case you guys weren't fully aware of it, despite what he said earlier, he, he ditched Edge for Young. Yes. But he kept Kane. Yes. So Johnny trusts the traitor more than he does the ninja. <laughs> hey, the capable traitor. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll leave that part out. Well, actually, in hindsight, uh, I think Edge does get better than Kane in near endgame because, you know, you got Edge pimped out with the, the ninja skills 
the katanas do a pretty good amount of damage, uh, when you, especially when you get the two ultimate weapons here in this place. And you, you get the different uh, shurikens that you can buy. You, you, at this point, you can also start buying um, uh, Fumo shurikens from the uh, the old man that gave you the Excalibur weapon in his oh, okay. shop. Uh, you can also buy uh, Yoichi arrows for Rosa in case you need to refill. But anyway, any, ladies and gentlemen, Lunar Subterranea is the largest dungeon in the game. Uh, well, that's not so large. It took option. two parts. It, 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 we're, take, we're taking two parts total to explore this entire area, ladies and gentlemen, because not only is it large, a lot of branching pathways. Uh, there's a lot of monster in boxes here. And you know the rule of this Let's Play: if it's a monster in a box, we have to show the battle off. Until we have, to, until we get to my editing skills for Final Fantasy IX, in which case every battle almost gets shown <laughs> off. <laughs> Why? Because I want you to see me struggle in getting that goddamn Gigas flute. Gigas flute for Ico? The Hill Giggers. You're, you're gonna go for that? I, I, uh, true, I'm gonna tell you a really true story right now. Well, not on the current playthrough I'm doing, but the most recent playthrough I was doing. I was trying to go at it from like a bit of a oh, let's player perspective, like what I was gonna be talking about the game. Yeah. And then I said, all right, now this asshole Hilgerger is one of the hardest steel items to get in the game, which is the Siren's Flute. And then I pilfered it on the first steel. I was like, you lucky son of a bitch. Yeah, tell me about lucky son of a bitch. I was like, <laughs> I well, this is gonna make me look like a liar. Really remembers farming that fucker. Well, not farming, just attempting to steal that shit for a long time. It was a goofy at though. I was always always the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, 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 hey, my flute. I thought it was a hybrid of the Jolly Green Giant and that really fat-ass mountain demon from Jackie Chan Adventures, Poe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't go anywhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cecil's taking in the rocks. I wish we had Edge here with us. He could survey the Moonstone. I actually do kind of miss the thief ability from Final Fantasy V that lets you see hidden pathways. I miss... Oh, uh, yeah, the... Uh, well, you can actually equip that as a side ability on one of your other oh, professions. Yeah, once you, once you level it up enough, yeah. White Dragon. Now be careful, you don't want to kill another person's mother. No. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Rydia. Memories, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember that bitch we killed? <laughs> 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 Wait for, wait for the neck wait for the ballad of Cecil Harvey. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, there are a few weapons in the lunar subterrain that are guarded by these boss encounters. Uh, the first one up to up the, up the bat is the white dragon who's protecting. Anyway, I I very much applaud Rose's dedication to her outfit on the fucking moon. Pink undies. You think so? I think she's actually the most appropriately dressed. She looks like she was with that of a Star Trek role. No kidding. Do you think we'll see Love Pink tattooed on her ass? <laughs> I don't know. Because it just glares whenever I look at the right <laughs> side. So the White Dragon here is guarding the Murasami for Edge. Um, Why is it guarding the Murasami for I Edge? I don't know. I, I, was never, sword. I, was never under, I never understood if these enemies were here before Zemus took over and they were simply brainwashed by Zemus or they were conjured up by Zemus as a means to protect these weapons to prevent them from being used against Zemus. Which makes you wonder why the hell Zemus didn't just throw the goddamn weapons out where they couldn't be used against yeah. them. I guess they don't have garbage disposal. Or, com of or compactors. <laughs> Heavily advanced society might took us. But anyway, in terms of actual strategies, the White Dragon counters everything. Everything with slow. Which really doesn't do anything in the long run. It's kind of annoying, kind of stalls the battle a bit. But uh, he also has Maelstrom, as you saw earlier. Everyone's in critical conditions, but I don't think I have to worry about it because White Dragon really doesn't attack you that often. So we have the weapon for a guy who's not even here. Well, you could sell it. Yip de doo. Oh, no one else has the Maelstrom. I mean, no. <laughs> that's, a rule, that's a rule of thumb for me. Ultimate, you don't sell all the weapons, you keep them. You know what? I made that mistake. I made one mistake once on one of my playthroughs. I accidentally threw uh, Ketchy's HP shout. What? <laughs> I was like, I was actually experimenting with a whole bunch of materia at the time, and one of the games I was doing was like a command materia only mission. Yeah. So when I was throwing around some of the weapons to make some use out of it, I ended up accidentally throwing <laughs> Ketchy's HP <laughs> shout. <laughs> What's a fucking megaphone doing in my back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you but you only use the HP shout when you're pretty much done materia grinding, though. Yeah. The only thing I really don't like ultimate weapons is there's no materia growth on it, except for. Aerith, but she, she she dies anyway. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Ah, everybody did a grandmother. No, she, that bitch is dead. <laughs> so why are you having me trying to hide spoilers on earlier games that everybody else played? On what games? Can you name? L.A. Noir. No, wait, that was you. Um, 
Yeah, I told you not to- Oh, excuse me, I was the newbie there, you bitch! <laughs> oh, see, well, somebody else was a newbie to Final Fantasy VII. There's no such thing. Wanna bet? Oh, well, uh, Matt, realistically, there is newbies all over the damn world, if you wanna get me on that. Right. On the Th internet. That's still something I can get you <laughs> on. On the internet? <laughs> on the internet, of course on the internet. Everybody knows of Seven, Ocarina of Time, and, uh... Another game. Not really. Do you know how many people actually keep screwing up the main plot to seven? No, 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 no. I mean, just I'm just aware of it. Not actually played the game. Aware of it. Oh. I'm trying to think of another one. Would World of Warcraft count? How? Just for the sheer popularity. It's really popular, but I just don't yeah, know the damn thing about it. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm not just talking about the amount of people that played the game. Just know about it. But that's just it. All I know about... But the thing is, is that I really don't know anything about World of Warcraft. All I know about World of Warcraft is World of Warcraft, and apparently in one of the latest expansions, you can control a Kung Fu Panda. Voiced by Jack Black? God, no, that would sell me... That would tear me away from the game. <laughs> I take it didn't like Kung Fu Panda. Uh, no, I just can't stand Jack Black too much. Oh, well, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Like, you ever see Gulliver's Travels that he was in? No, I haven't. Gulliver's Travels had this one scene where he actually whipped up, he actually took, used his pee to put out a fire. The thing is, though, is that because Jack Black was in it, that scene loses credibility to me <laughs> because there is an actual moment in the actual Gulliver Travel where they do that. But with Jack Black in the mix, it feels like they didn't do that because it's a homage to the book. It just felt like they put it out because, ha <laughs> pee. Do you know how old this movie is? The Gulliver's Travels movie with Jack Black? Probably about maybe two, three years. Ago? Two years two or three years ago? Yeah, it was recently remake it was recently done. Yeah. I highly doubt Jack Black was around for the original Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to avoid being jerked yeah. out. I remind me to show you the pick of Destiny later on. <laughs> 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 anyway, sorry about that. I had to make a detour to get that one treasure box that I missed. I thought you were making a detour in the conversation. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the dodge. I'm I'm, I'm a little lost here. Despite me playing this game for so many years, I still get a little lost here from time to time. That shit happens. Hell, uh, I think the only dungeon I distinctively remember off the top of my head without getting lost is Kefka's Tower. Um, because I still struggle a bit with uh, the Northern Crater in 7 because I want to make sure I get all the material you can get. Well, sir, no, no. Go down one way, go back up the other way. I think you gotta send Vincent... You can either send Vincent down the one path, or you can investigate the waterfall yourself to get the Mega All material. Yeah. That one took me a while to get. <laughs> or am I thinking of the W item one? W item is in no, this... No, W item is in Midgar. Uh, in, this, in the tunnel. That takes forever to get. Am I thinking of W summon? No, no. That's, that's W item. That's... W summon is in the battle arena. What am I thinking of? The w item... No, not, no, not, uh, no, W item is the one inside the Midgar train station. I'm talking about, there's a materia inside the northern crater that's obscured by this bright core that's no... Shield. It's, it was a shield? The shield material. That's the only thing in the game that gives you peerless, aside from Aerith's limit breaks, which you can't use because Sephiroth decides to shank her. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have gold dragons. Who I guess everything. they shoot lightning? Uh, they shoot lightning and they counter everything with constrict. But they are susceptible to a tornado, so you can use that and kill them. Oh, the worms have fallen. We won't be, uh, unfortunately, we won't be getting it, but there is one particular uh, weapon that Kane can get from Red and Blue Dragons, as we'll be encountering those later. Uh, it's called the Wyvern Lance, which I think is the second best weapon in the game next to the Holy Lance, but I think it's a little cooler, because if you swing it like a normal weapon, it makes a lightning bolt sound instead of the usual chop chop. Or clonk clonk. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, be swinging the spear, you're right. So how are we breathing in space here? Uh, we're not in space, we're underground. How are we breathing underground? In space. Uh, artificial atmosphere. Fuck it, I'll buy it. There is also, uh, the, the red and blue dragons also have a rare drop for Rydia called the Dragon Whisker, which is her best weapon in the game, I believe. Um, but again, like, uh, the Wyvern Lance, it's like a 0.4% drop rate. Instant awesome? Just our dragons. Yeah, pretty much. Dino Zombie. We because the last it. one was apparently still alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those those St. Elmo's fires are surrounding the dragon, maybe. St. Elmo's fire is blue. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> and who's this? Little and Murderer. Why does that sound like a sitcom? <laughs> Little Murderer! <laughs> Don't you dare touch that! <laughs> this time, this fall, the WB. Oh, wait, that's Channel's Niggas. 
So he's vulnerable to lightning. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to hit him with lightning. Why not? Surely he, this guy wants to die. Suicidal. Uh, that, get, that was a reasonable explanation. You know what? Why not? It wants to die. I can imagine that with the death masks. Okay, so we're going to give it what it wants. It's vulnerable to lightning. We're going to hit you with the fullest extent of Thundaga you've ever experienced in your entire life, buddy. Why, is, why is he floating? I don't know. Remember, he's on the moon. Low gravity. Oh, that's right. But why aren't we floating? Oh, armor. Oh, armor, you're right. Hehe, <laughs> <laughs> I fooled you. I'll repay you too, bud. He's also Italian. <laughs> <It's> Luigi. <laughs> so... Uh, just for a little clarification, this guy... Okay, well, he's not, he's not really a threat at all. Uh, little murderer got literally murdered. <laughs> that guy's name on the SNES uh, original translation was called Tricker. Mm -hmm. As you've seen, you hit him with lightning. He says, I fooled you. He casts haste on himself, and then he starts whipping out Thundaga of his own to hit you guys for massive damage. Of course, all you gotta do is set up Reflect, let loose one tiny thunder spell, and then just let him kill himself. Pretty much. Or you can just physically attack him, because unless you hit him with lightning, he's only the only thing he does is cast Libra on himself. Alright. So you can use him as a means to, you know, like, recharge in case you're nowhere near a safe point. How did this fit in the box? Uh... You're just asking that now. <laughs> it was something I meant to ask when I watched back. It was something I meant to ask when I watched the playback, but we, it just never called. We me. had a we had an encounter earlier with uh, two dark sages and two moon maidens inside one box. Now no, they were just now they you were just having an inter, they were just having an interspatial orgy. Well, no, but I was gonna say they could use clown car technology and fit all. And that's box. all you got to tell me, clown car. <laughs> At Bahama, who gets top billing? It's the only one I'm going to be using from now on. Pretty much. Again, top billing. Better than Flare, better than Meteor. Well, better than Meteor because the charge time is nowhere near as long. And Meteor's kind of overrated, I will say. Yeah. Rock falls, you die. Boring. You know, Meteor's considered holy elemental. In this game? Mm-hmm. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> it's punishment from God himself. Yeah, you can see him. Purge the infidels. That's why he killed... <laughs> With fucking Meteors. <laughs> That's why he killed them. Um... That's why he killed Tala. His heart was impure. He committed the sin of wrath, and now he died. <laughs> now he died to be a meteor. Yeah, here we go, Blue Dragon. These are the guys that dropped the Wyvern Lances and Dragon Whiskers. It's also a really shitty anime. Blue... Uh, oh, okay. What, you you watched the anime before they played the game? You no, I just, game? no, I'm just going off second-hand information. Oh, you, you never played Blue Dragon ever? I heard that wasn't too bad. No, it was boring. Okay. It is, like, the most generic RPG you can possibly play in your life. Okay. Well, my general rule of thumb when it comes to gaming is better a game to follow the recipe to the letter correctly than something taking well, a wild risk of blowing up in space. Well, I if it's your first RPG, you'll get through it, no problem. Just like Nino Kumi or Just something? that, no, because like, if, like, to me and you, we play Final Fantasy all of our lives, Final it's Fan very bare bones. Like, I'll play 4 before I play Blue Dragon. I'll play Final Fantasy 1 before I play Blue Dragon. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I apologize to all those that like Blue Dragon, it just didn't tickle my fancy. Yeah, right, the, and in case you're wondering, a man's fancy is just blow his ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tickling nuts the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> you want a game to tickle your fancy? Well, there it is. Oh, son of a bitch. Red Dragon and Blue Dragon. Why did I pause there? By the way, if you let them fuse, they become a completely purple dragon. As you can no doubt tell with the purple stripes on the red dragon. It looks like they're in the middle of a fusion. We kind of interrupted them. <laughs> Alright, so what? So, Blue Dragon has higher defense, right? Blue Dragon has pretty much higher everything than the red dragon. And I think the red dragon hits harder, occasionally. Because, uh, well, the first off, the red dragon has less HP than the blue dragon. And the red dragon's uh, weak to Blizzard, uh, Blizzaga. So two spells of Blizzaga will kill the wet, uh, the wet dragon, the Elmerfoot now. The wet dragon. <laughs> wet dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Widia, do a favor and cast Blizzaga. Fuck, <laughs> <Beachy>. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, but the blue dragon, on the other hand, I don't think has any elemental weaknesses. If you just have a hard defense, you know, because you know, it's you so stereotypical of color scheme: red, violent, blue, passive. That's like stereotypical <laughs> right there. I don't need blue any. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> but it, it be, you know, but you know, my mindset. My my. I played this game back, uh, game back in '94. I was about seven years old. You know, my mindset. Okay, the fire breathing dragons weak to ice. Maybe the ice breathing dragons weak to fire. No, it absorbs fire. Fuck you, game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think. Well, see, here's the thing. It's also in a bit of an oxymoron. 
While a blue dragon, while an ice dragon would generally be weak to fire, you would also have to consider that many sauropop, many dragons of the sort are generally strong against fire to begin with in the first place. Yeah, well, I would understand. So uh, maybe that cancels out. I would understand an immunity to fire, or at least it has higher defenses towards fire, but not absorb. Wow, you know that's a, that's a slap in the face. Almost as much as the little murderer. Yeah. <laughs> So this is actually this is also where we start getting crystal equipment for Cecil, which, uh, for the most part, protect them against undead creatures, which are nowhere to be seen in this area except for the dino zombies that we can take care of two shots, and maybe the lunasaurs we encounter later. But uh, I think the the gauntlets and the helmet also protect Cecil from uh, status elements like uh, berserk and poison and toad and all that kind of stuff. But don't you generally want Cecil going berserk if all he's really doing is just clocking people in the head? True, but at that point he's doing so much damage with his his weapons at this point, it doesn't really matter. But you're right, though. I would like the option. Well, I mean, granted, I could always unequip the crystal helmet. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know... By the way, you're, colossal you're colossally pissing off the composer here. Oh, uh, well... No, but seriously, like, every time you get it going, he, <laughs> he stops, he just, like, throws down the uh, stage. Hey, fuck you! Play in the cave, not me. So many random encounters in here. See? <laughs> one, thing I'll, one thing I'll always love about Persona 2 over Final Fantasy is, those that is the general encounter and nonability. Although Final Fantasy, some Final Fantasies have it. Final Fantasy, uh, yeah, Final Fantasy 8, now that I think of it, has the encounter and nonability. Yeah. And the game is generally easier if you play at lower levels, so... I remind. Mm. That's wow, that's fucking cryptic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I, I always say that when I encounter these guys, they're called. You said they're called veterans. Final Fantasy and later, and later oh, because you said at that point there, yeah. they've been in so many Final Fantasy games that they earned a title. Despite the fact of them doing nothing in particularly useful. Well, our remands here. The, the only thing they do is cast Doom on you, and that's it. Just well on it. They cast instead. Doom, and then you suddenly start playing Double Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be creative with a giant fuck me eye as a weak point. They give you six six experience points. One of those intentional. How much? Six 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 experience points. That was intentional. I will call it demonic, but there's an extra six in there. It's super demonic. Oh yeah, I forgot the difference. The other difference between red and blue dragons. Red dragons get two attacks uh, with each turn. Exactly. It, but it's still stereotypical. Red dragon offense, blue dragon defense. Yeah. And bad video and game, bad. apparently. <laughs> These guys are just... They're, they're paper mache. <laughs> Ouch. I was, really, I was really hoping I get a Wyvern land, too, but, you know, I'm recording myself. Fuck rare item drops. Yeah, wait until I... Oh, God, now you just made me really terrified for Final Fantasy IX. All right, now this is usually an Iron Sword. I can steal on the first steal, and then we're here for two hours. From the... the in the beginning of the game? Yeah. I never got it on the first deal. I always got it, like, around the fourth or fifth. I got it on the first deal recently. What are you doing different than it me? <laughs> I think it's because... Well, I can't speak for early game, but later game I know how to generally max out spirit. I try to... I generally boost his spirit stat as much as I can. His spirit and his speed go into the steel calculation. Oh, do they? Yeah. No, I know, I know speed, but I didn't know spirit. Spirit affects it, too. Huh. He's at least as far as I know. <laughs> He's gotta be in the mood to steal. <laughs> hey, if you... Hey, if you... No, it's called... No, you know why? What? Spirit affects confidence. Yeah, oh, yeah. Besides, in all out honesty, there's like a certain there's a big formula that goes into it, but the only thing I know dead offhand about steel is that it's a two part calculation. First steel has to hit, and then it does the uh, whole item array slot thing. If you have bandit, you bypass the first calculation automatically. God, I love bandit every time I get it now once I learned that. I only uh, started using bandit and uh, thievery uh, in later playthroughs of 9. Yeah. Because earlier, it was like, why bother? I can still kick the shit out of these guys, no problem. Oh, thanks, Toots. Okay, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That's what's a douchebag, though. <laughs> you know what? After all the bad luck he's, he's endured and gone through, he kind of deserves to be a bit of a prick at this it, point. It's kind of hardened him up. Yeah. In more ways than one. But, uh... I used one of my Mega Electrics before fighting this guy. Was Rydia squatting for a piss? Uh, no, she may have just... We, we, we've been kind of walking all over the place this entire apartment. Yeah. yeah it's kind of hard. There's no toilets on the moon. No. Can you imagine trying to take a piss on the moon and then it just floats right back up and everything in your face? <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, it just floats upward with you and you're like... Ugh. 
<laughs> well, that's someone's media right now. <laughs> <laughs> Minus one subscriber. <laughs> this is the part where they talk about the shit in the moon. <laughs> oh, I hate that part. <laughs> Oh, man. Red Wings March is playing the entire time. I love this track. Oh. Yeah. It is odd, though, because uh, the version they're using for this in this in this dungeon walkthrough is the DS version of the Red Wings theme. See, I'm not musically inclined because I didn't really notice too much of a difference. Well, I still love the theme, mind you. It's just that it's weird because... Um, Kane is mortified that he got Dino Lugi. You remember Dead the, Dino Lugi at that. You remember the beginning of the game where we see the Baron's air fleet taken to the skies? They're playing the Red Wings theme. Yeah. They're playing the original Super Nintendo version of the Red Wings theme, though. Mm -hmm. But for this dungeon, they use the DS version. And it's odd because you can also go to the sound test in this game's collection, and they play the SNES version of Red Wings when you play it in the sound test. But for some reason, they play the DS version when you're in this dungeon. The skull on Kane was tripping balls. Uh, <laughs> hey, buddy, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> hey, you're on your knees. Why are you doing that? Ah, uh, the f this room. It only has a chest inside that contains a red fang, but if you use a siren in that room, well, we'll be showing that off later. Next part. Not now. <laughs> Meanwhile, we get to hear a frustrated composer repeatedly try and give up on the Red Wings piece. <laughs> okay, you're just hanging there, no bull. <laughs> <laughs> I always imagine Cecil having rapid seizures every time, and Rosa's like, Cecil, Cecil! Just fight it, Cecil, fight it. <laughs> and then Kane tries to make a move on Rosa between there like the scumbag he is. Split second hits. <laughs> How'd you do that? How did I do that? You walked over a pit. Walked over, yeah. That's not immediately apparent. Uh, I was actually stuck here for the longest, wondering, how the hell did I get to that sword that I saw in the beginning of the dungeon? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you have to cross that invisible gap right there. It's kind of, it's kind of a dick move, actually. Cause nothing hints that you can do that. Nothing has so far, and nothing ever will, apparently. Yeah. I mean, you get you get invisible pathways and caverns and stuff like that, and that makes some degree of sense. But... Monster in a box! You know, walking over a gap? No, I don't... Since when can we jump? Final well, Fantasy 13 2 actually instigates a jump feature. Didn't 10 2 do it first? 10 2 was scripted jumps, 13 2 is jump, jump, jump button, jump. Oh, so you actually have a jump button. Yeah, so I know. scripted. And I was looking at it going... Finally? <laughs> Since when does Final Fantasy need a jump button? And that's why Final Fantasy 13 2 <laughs> sucks. <laughs> a jump button? <laughs> Worst game ever done by. <laughs> yeah. Because if geeks have shown anything in the past is that they hate change. <laughs> Seriously. Everybody bitches well, I'm, when I'm, they I'm, change. I'm not disagreeing. Exactly. <laughs> I'm all for change as long as it's not a really radical train, uh, change. I'm all for a change as long as it's not a stupid change. Alright, in the last game we gave you a Master Sword you could power up to four levels. In this new game we give you a Master Sword that only works when you stab yourself in the head with it. Uh... Thanks? Okay guys, we're only halfway done the Lunar Subterrain. So the next time we meet, we are going to finish off the rest of this place, and then after that, we're finishing the game off. Uh, you liar. Well, the original game anyway. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, well. Anyway, see you guys later.